In this tutorial, we're going to be building a simple to-do application that uses hooks and a REST API. We're going to be using a free API called JSON Placeholder. If we go to the website, we can find a few examples of APIs. We go to JSON Placeholder over here, and if we scroll down, we're going to find a few different resources. The resource that we're interested in is to-dos. So if we go to to-dos and open it up, we'll get to this JSON object over here. As you can see, it's an array, and then inside this array, there's to-do items. And each to-do item has a user ID, an identifier, a title, and a completed. So we're going to be taking this list of to-dos and displaying them in our application. We're going to start by installing a couple of dependencies. The first dependency that we're going to install is Axios. We're going to use Axios to access the API. I find it a little bit cleaner than using the JavaScript built-in fetch. And we're also going to install Bootstrap. And Bootstrap will just be used for styling our application. Next, let's go ahead and get our application running. So we'll just do an npm start. With our application running, let's go ahead and get Bootstrap imported. So inside index.js, we're going to go ahead and import Bootstrap. Once you save that over here and your screen refreshes, what should happen is that you'll see that this color will change the pink, and that's how we'll know that Bootstrap has successfully been imported. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our app.js. I'll just close the sidebar over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just remove all the HTML that's already there and just replace that with a div so we get a blank screen. Now we're going to be tracking some state. We want to have a list of to dos. In order to do that, we're going to use a hook called use state and we'll get that from React. Then inside of our application over here, we're going to define our state. So we're gonna have a list of to-dos, we're gonna have a set to-do. So what we're saying is we have to-dos, which is the object, and then set to-dos will update that list. Now that will be equal to our use state. And the default value for our use state will be an empty array. The way this works is you execute the hook over here, and then we have to destructure it using this array format. So the first item over here, you can name it whatever you want. It's going to represent this first default value of empty. And this value over here will represent updating that value when we call set to do's. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build a loading component. What the loading component will do is it'll show a little spinner. The spinner that we want to use is going to come from Bootstrap. This is the Bootstrap website. I'm just going to go to Documents, and if you type in Spinner, you will get the HTML required to create a spinner on your web page. We're going to take the HTML that's over here and build a component called loading. So let's go ahead and implement this loading component. Within our SRC over here, I'm going to create a directory called components. Inside here, we're going to create a component, loading.js. We'll go ahead and implement that component. So I'm using a plugin called React Simple Snippets, and I can do the following. We're going to import React. Then we're going to go ahead and create that component, and it's just going to be called loading. And then for the HTML that we're going to use, we're just going to grab one of these spinners. I'm going to grab that first one. It's the color blue. So we'll grab that, put it inside here. Now the modification we need to do with JSX is class is a keyword. So classes need to be renamed to class name. And what I did here is on Mac, I highlighted that. I hit Command D, and then that gave me two cursors, and I was able to type. If you're on Windows, I believe that is Control D to give you multiple cursors. If not, just rename those two variables over there. Now, we'll save this, and we'll go back to our app.js. Then within our app.js, we're going to import that loading component, and we're going to import that from the components directory and we'll just import loading. Then inside our div over here inside app.js, we'll just use that component that we imported. We'll go back to our application over here and we have a spinner. Let's go ahead and position that spinner in the center of the screen. So the way we can do that is within Bootstrap, I can go ahead and just search for center. And then I'm going to grab this little bit of CSS over here. So position absolute, top 50 and start 50. Go back to our application, go to loading. And then within the class over here, I'll just paste in that and go back to React. And we have our spinner in the center of the screen. 
Now we can focus on retrieving data. So the way we're gonna retrieve data is we're gonna get it when the component loads. So we'll go back to our app.js and inside our app.js, we're gonna to have to add a new hook that we need. We have use state and now we're gonna have use effect. The use effect hook listens for side effects. Typically you wanna to listen to data and see if that data changes. However, the way we're going to use it is we want it to fire just one time when the application loads. To achieve this, you give it one parameter and you leave this array empty. So by leaving the array empty, only fires one time when the component loads. Let's go ahead and load that data. We're going to use Axios get method. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab that URL for the REST API for the to do's and we'll paste that inside the get. Then we're gonna to decide to use promises instead of async await over here. Uh, the reason for that is it'll just be a little bit cleaner than having to do the extra setup to make async a work, or at least this small example. So we're gonna use then, and then then is gonna take in an arrow function, and that arrow function will get a result. What's gonna happen when get finishes executing, then is gonna execute, and it's gonna fire a function. That function will take in the result, and the result will have some data on it. We can go ahead and check that data with the console.log result.data. So if we go back to our application, open up the developer tools, then we have this array over here. And this array represents all the information that we get back from the to-do. As you can see, each item has a completed, an ID, a title, and a user ID. If you want to display that data even a little bit nicer, we can do console.table. Hit refresh over here, and then you can see that we have this table. It has the user ID, the ID, the title, and completed values. What's kind of cool is you can also sort the data in this table. Now that we know how to get the data, all we have to do is set the data. So we can use the set to do's method over here and pass in result.data. Once we have our data, we want our spinner to disappear. So the way we're going to do this is we want to update our use state actually. So instead of the initial value being empty array, we're going to set it to null. Then down over here in the HTML, what we're going to do is use a ternary operator. So we'll surround our loading over here in those brackets. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check our to-dos. And all we're going to do is put a question mark there, which is a ternary operator. So if to-dos is not null, we're just going to show to start off with just a quick little uh, div over here. And then what we'll do is we'll put our to-dos there. So once we get our data, it just says to-dos. So that's step one. Step two, we're going to replace this div over here with a component. So we'll take this div over here and we're going to be creating a component called to do list. This is what it's going to look like. We're going to take in a list of to do's that's going to have a property and we're going to pass our to do's inside it. Now, when we save, it's going to tell us that it doesn't exist. We'll go to our components folder and create a new file called to do list.js. Inside this file, we're going to go ahead and create a component called to do list. And inside there, we're going to do a return statement. And it'll just be a div that says to do component. And then we'll go back inside our app.js file and we're going to go ahead and import that file. And it's going to come from the same place as our other imports. Save that. And now it says to do component. On our app.js page over here, our to do list is taking in a list of to dos. So back inside our to-do list, what we're going to do is destructure out at the beginning of this function, the to-dos. We're going to grab those to-dos, make sure to put those curly braces over here. We're going to be using some bootstrap to display the to-do list. So back in bootstrap over here, I'm going to search for list, and this will give us all the list groups. Now there's various ways to display a list group, and the one I'm interested in will have badges at the end because we're going to want to put checkboxes to tell us whether or not the item has been completed. So let's go over here and we're going to copy some of this HTML. The first thing we're going to want to do inside of our return over here is we're going to want to put a UL. We can also delete the previous div that we had there before. So we'll paste in this UL over here and remember class is a keyword so we need to rename that to class name. Then inside of that UL what we're going to want to do is take our to do's and we're going to call a map. So put everything inside curly braces 
we're going to go to todos.map, which will take in an arrow function, and it'll pass in each item from that list. So since each item is a todo, we're going to call the variable todo. And then inside here, we're going to put an li. So we'll just start with that first li, and we'll put that there. And I'm just going to save that over here and put that on a new line. And then I'm going to close that li. So we have this li here, and I'll just kind of open it up like that. And then inside of the li, what we're going to do is display the to do title. So if we save that right now and hit refresh, we're presented with every single to do's title. So let's go ahead and use a checkbox to show whether or not the to do item is completed. So we'll just create an input and we're going to call it type equals checkbox. And there's a value on that called checked. And all we need to do is set it to to do dot completed. Close up that input, hit save, and then every single one of our to-do items is given this little checkbox. We can't change the value, but this is a good representation of whether or not the to-do item is completed. And just a quick little overview of our application over here. If I hit refresh, you'll see that we get the spinner. And then once we have the to-do list, we get those to-do items displayed. Our application is basically constructed of our app.js, which uses the useState hook to set up a to-dos list and a set to-dos to update it. In our use effect over here, which only executes one time, we use Axios to go ahead and get that data and call set to do's. When we have data, we display the to do list. If we don't have the to do list, we display the loading screen. And then inside the to do list, we pass in those to do's. And all we do is use a UL and LI in order to display the to do's title and completed value. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share.